You may remember this computer from a video I did a few years ago. And of course back then I put in a new SSD, redid the thermal paste and gave it a good cleaning. But since then I gave it to my girlfriend and it is now dusty once again. So I think we should restore it a final time and then I'm going to sell it off for charity. So let's get started. For the last year or so this iMac has sat in our shed collecting even more dust. In hindsight, I should have placed it in a plastic bag like I do with most computers I store. And basically, it turns out that spiders like to use Macs for their web development. I managed to carry this inside without even noticing the spider was there. It's known as a daddy long legs, thankfully harmless to humans. My initial capture attempt didn't go exactly to plan, but I was able to catch the critter before it ran off the table, and I ended up placing it in our tool shed. And while this Mac is 13 years old, it still looks modern, apart from it having an optical drive, something that Apple ditched in its Macs about 10 years ago now. So let's power up this old Mac and see if it's still functional. I actually forgot what side the power button was on, and I also forgot that I hadn't actually plugged it in yet. This time it fired into life without issue. It currently has 4GB of RAM and the 120GB SSD I installed back in 2019. Sabrina used it for about a year and a half and it was fine for basic tasks. I ran the same benchmark I used back in 2019 and it scored virtually the same. The temperatures were also still decent while running the CPU benchmark, fans at idle and it only hitting 56 degrees Celsius. So let's open it up and see just how dusty it is inside after a word from today's sponsor. Is your old backpack looking pretty tired? Well, why not check out today's sponsor Brevity and their range of quality colorful backpacks. This one features a water resistant laptop sleeve, a water bottle holder, and also features quick and easy side access. Get 10% off by using code PCIFRI10 over at www.brevity.co forward slash PCIFRI. Since the outer casing is filthy, a preliminary wipe down was definitely in order. And let's hope we don't find any more spiders inside. And if you're looking for one of these Macs, they can be found pretty cheaply online. You can also get this very unit as I'll be auctioning it off for charity next week on eBay, so stay tuned for that. I'll also be putting in 8GB of RAM. I sourced these sticks from another Mac I had lying around. This one was also in a video a few years ago. Can you guess which one? The only part of this Mac that Apple considered user serviceable was the RAM hidden under this door, with a decent amount of dust as a bonus. Unlike new iMacs, the screen isn't glued in place. Magnets around the glass hold it to the frame, and this is pretty easy to remove with a few suction cups. And holding the front bezel on are a series of torque screws, and I'm also following an iFixer tutorial that I'll link in the description below. I lift it gently from the corners, doing my best to avoid touching the fragile display surface. Be sure to disconnect the small microphone cable at the top as well. And here are the exposed internals of the Mac. There is definitely a lot of dust buildup considering it was cleaned out only two and a half years ago. Removing the 20 inch display panel is also pretty easy with two torque screws holding the connector to the logic board. And after removing the screws on either side, the panel can be lifted up and underneath are four small power cables that must also be unplugged. To remove the logic board, the speaker has to come out. These are sizable drivers that sound good even today. Strangely enough, there is a fan dedicated to the optical drive, blowing air upwards. And to stop various connectors getting snagged on the logic board, I taped them back. Then it was a matter of removing the various different Torx screws. And finally, the whole board and cooling assembly came out with ease. Thankfully, you can get into these Macs, but I must admit you've got to do a lot to get to the processor. But if you've got an old iMac like this, I'd highly recommend taking it apart to remove dust and redo the thermal paste. The paste I applied back in 2019 hasn't dried out and was still keeping the Core 2 Duo CPU at decent temperatures. I wonder if the GPU fared as well. Getting to the die requires one to unclip small plastic clips on the other side. I had to be pretty careful to avoid damaging the surface of the board. I honestly feel like this isn't a very secure way to mount a heatsink of this size. And wow, something definitely happened to the paste here. It's the same compound that I applied to the CPU back in 2019. A good thing we're applying some new paste then. I'll also be putting in a fresh SSD. This one was only 28 Australian dollars. It's cheap, but it works. And now the internals can be dusted out. It is surprising how much can build up in less than three years. So I would highly recommend dusting out your old iMac if you have the opportunity. The post 2012 iMacs are adhered together sadly though. 
I was also sure to brush out the fans, which seem to adequately cool this Mac. This fan is primarily used to keep the hard disk cool. Originally this housed a 320GB mechanical drive. The graphics processor got a fresh application of paste and I was sure to securely clip the heatsink back on. It is possible to swap out the processor if needed, and I must say it was a little awkward to put the heatsink back on due to the brace on the other side of the board. Keeping track of the screws is critical in a Mac like this with multiple screw types and lengths. Having taken this exact same computer apart before definitely helps as you start to memorize the screw locations. The old SSD is fine, however, for privacy reasons, I'd prefer to simply put in a new drive as I'll be auctioning off this for charity. You'd be surprised how much faster an old Mac can be with the use of solid state memory. A secondary 2.5 inch SSD can be put in place of the optical drive. However, in my opinion, it's still quite useful being able to read and write CDs. If you're ever in the market for iMac parts, the display panels are definitely one of the most expensive, so be extra careful when handling them. Also avoid touching the surface as it smudges and scratches very easily. Compared to newer iMacs, this is far easier to get into. I do wish swapping out the hard disk and redoing the thermal paste weren't such time consuming processes though. In fact, once again, Apple considers the RAM to be the only user serviceable part of this, something you can't say about their lineup of current iMacs. Keeping the display panel dust and debris free proved to be quite difficult, but I got there in the end with repeated puffs of air. I then gave the protective outer glass a final wipe down with some lens cleaner and a microfiber cloth. Using some eucalyptus oil, I removed any grime that still remained on the outer surface. With it all back together and plugged in, it blared out three beeps, meaning something is wrong with the RAM. Since RAM can be quite susceptible to dust in the slots, I simply reseated the sticks, which gave us the also reassuring boot chime once again. I plugged in my 10.11L Capitan installer USB and the Mac did indeed detect the new SSD I installed. A short time later, the operating system was successfully installed. It now has 8GB of RAM and the newest supported Mac operating system. It is a lot cleaner and still quite functional. Installing Linux might be a good idea once El Capitan stops being supported by more applications. I still can't believe that this Mac will be considered vintage pretty soon. Oh, how far technology has come. So let's try playing a few games on this soon to be vintage machine. I found that running games such as Minecraft at 1280 x 800 yields very playable frame rates. El Capitan doesn't support the latest version of Java, however older versions of Minecraft will comfortably run at around 60 frames per second. Old School RuneScape is another game that runs fine on this Mac. The Nvidia GeForce 9400 graphics processor is also only reaching 50 degrees Celsius with the fans at idle speeds while running this game. In fact, temperatures overall were improved with the new application of Thermal Compound. Super Tux Kart running at 1280 x 800 low settings was very playable. Definitely a fun free game for all the systems. Modern games will without a doubt struggle or not work at all due to the outdated graphics. However, there is adequate airflow so what's in here stays cool at least. I would personally recommend buying a slightly newer quad-core iMac as the Core 2 Duo CPU in here is quite limited these days. That being said, web browsing and full HD YouTube playback are still viable uses for this Mac. So there we have it, a clean machine once again. And honestly, if you were in the market for buying an old iMac, I'd probably stick to something like 2011 or newer. So at least it's got a dual core quad thread i5 processor. But anyway, I hope the new owner finds it quite useful and I hope the people over at Food Bank find that donation useful as well. They provide food for people who aren't fortunate enough to get it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I've got a lot more old tech related ones coming up in the near future. Take it easy. And I'll see you then.